I'm I'm sorry, not sorry. I have been watching the chat as we've been getting ready here for Paint and Slay today uh, as a fun way to start off our Friday afternoon. Because I hear hey, there was kitty problems. I hear there were this catception and like a bee. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, here, here we were trying to prepare for Paint and Slay, and all of a sudden I'm like, Why? What's, what's going what's wrong happening? with pancakes? Why? How can pancakes go Why? wrong? Huh? What do you mean? <laughs> So, uh, chat, thank you for the um, giggles. I was having a fit of giggles, giggles before we started, not even kidding, just seeing mm. your reactions because I don't have the stream itself up because, you know, OBS and Twitch don't like to play together when I have both going at the same time. Uh, but thank you and welcome and so excited to see you. Before we get into painting some wonderful mimics that we had started last week, Yeah, we do have a few things happening this week, Bridal Champions. So, Lauren, do you want to kind of give them the rundown and then I'll jump into the nitty gritty? Yeah, I'm going to keep this super short because um, there might be more happening, especially with like pancake art. Who knows? <laughs> right? But probably the, the biggest thing is the finale of Idol Champions Presents Court of the Raven Queen will be happening this Monday at 4 p.m. Pacific. Mm -hmm. Come by and see all of the chaos that you have wrought. Huh. We are. We're going to try to save everybody. Every. I would like to remind everybody. Everybody's death warded or in um, Farida's book. So, so it's hopefully going to be hard to kill us. Anyway, come on by. Speaking of that, the new vote is up right now. Yes. So, if you haven't booted up the game just yet, now would be a really good time mm -hmm. because I I hear today's vote it's is interesting. Um, it's it's a lot. It's. Mm. Mm. Today's mm. one is a lot. Mm -hmm. I oh, I, I should have had my minis. I see if I were like thinking ahead of time. I could have had, you know, one mini representing the other one and one representing the other one. But, you know, it's. It... We can only do so much in the I day. I know. I know. This is true. <laughs> but, um, you know, do, do you want your Orcus in his boombox or, or do you want Vecna with, you know, iron hand factors going on? Or maybe not well, iron hack. Here's the thing. We don't know if Orcus is going to show up with a boombox. Everybody wants him to. I kind of do. Like, <laughs> if, if, he, if that's the Orcus that's showing up, that's the one I'm I want. For it. I mean, so if, if we're going on that assumption, because mm -hmm. honestly, until this very moment, I did not have a preference because both of them sound bad. Both of uh -huh. them are different levels of bad. Both of them are probably going to be horrible however if it's orcus with a boom box i'm here for it so now i know i'm voting orcus anyway that's um everyone is death warded except havilar uh oh. havilar yeah. is death warded mm -hmm. no she's not death warded sorry i haven't death warded no, havilar her. just made an appearance havilar just showed up i still gotta death ward her yes anyway that's the only announcement that i'm going to say now let's mimic mimic or Mimi and Ginny, as I call it. This is Mimi. Say hi to Mimi. And here's Ginny for me. I know, Lauren, you're still thinking about your names, or have we locked in Lojan names? I haven't locked in names yet, and, and now I realize I did forget one very important announcement, oh. which is we have Trevor in chat as our mod today. He <gasps> is you, doing all the moderation stuff and all of the producing behind the scenes. So thank you, Trevor. If you do have any questions for us about painting, about Idol Champions, about Court of the Raven Queen, about... Um, creatures with tongues, go ahead and put those in chat with question in big capital letters at the beginning, because we can't always be watching chat while we're painting. And that way Trevor can grab it and we can get to your question when we have a moment to not be looking at tongues. All right, back to you, V. Yay, and now I'm hearing Trevor going, I'll be watching you. Mm -hmm. All the mm -hmm. Monsters, Inc. Okay, so we've done some pretty good progress from last week. We have the mouths and the tongues taken care of both in the keg and in the chest. We did the eyeballs and we got started on the wood details going on the chest as well as the wood details going on the stand to the keg, which means we still have some more base colors to get on here. And then we will move on to doing more of the detail works. So what we're gonna do is jump over to our friend, the keg, keg. and we're going to take leather brown so the Yay. beastie brown we're gonna take leather brown and paint that on to the wood area mm. is the plan now sometimes my leather brown has a tendency to come out a little bit more tawny than i want it to so if i'm noticing that my leather brown is looking yellow uh you can always offset that by adding in a little bit of beastie brown so basically what i am using color wise is the game color vallejo from vallejo and it is leather brown, which is basically a tan brown. For those of you using other colors or different brands, go for tan. Is go for we're tan. Doing. Yeah. Kind of kind of going for like an oak barrel-esque look here. Hmm. And I'm oh, assuming we're going to get 
Well, actually, yeah, the about keg. A, the keg, it's surprisingly not as much as you would think. So about a, you know, a dime dollop worth of paint should do you. Okay. And what size brush? Because I, I keep going back and forth between I, like, oh, I know, tiny this or... One, honestly, because of everything you're going to have to work around, it will be easier to use a details brush. Okay. So I would go with that one. I'm actually going to use my uh, red grass one, which is comparable to a 10 over zero. And we are just getting the wood. We're going to try to avoid the, the bands and these if you, uh, arms and all that. If you get it onto the bands and the arms, that's actually pretty cool because those are going to get blacked out for iron bands. Oh. So that's okay. okay. It's more you want to be careful as you get towards where we just did the wood for the stand. And um, well, really, there's no reason to get near the eyes and the mouth quite yet. So... <laughs> Yeah, if if, if you, I'm getting that close, I've done time, something yeah. wrong. You hiccuped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then then yeah. I have stopped paying attention to what I am painting, and I'm just going, oh, la, 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 not paying attention. And again, you want your paint consistency to be about that of maple syrup, so not thick like to toothpaste. Reason for that is because you don't want this to layer up so much that you start to obliterate details on your miniature. And that yeah. can happen as you add in too much paint to your surfaces because this is acrylic paint and spoiler alert, acrylic paint is a type of plastic essentially. So when it dries, it'll actually start loading into those details and you start losing them the more layers you put on that are heavy handed. Which, which is why acrylic always has that interesting smell. Don't it? Yep. Yeah, that, that smell that reminds you to uh, open a window every now and then. Mm -hmm. Speaking of open windows, I do have an open window today, folks. So if you hear outside sounds, I make no apologies for it. Hey, you know, we, we've already had a cat on stream, so why not say, some birds? Yeah. There's a chance you might hear birds. There was a cute little, um, oh, what are they called? Chickadees. Ah. There's a chickadee right on the branch outside the window uh, earlier. Aww. So I was hearing, dee 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 just made me happy. That's awesome. That just made me happy. I'm like, oh, spring. Um, <laughs> it's close. <laughs> it's almost here. Forewarning, there is a murder of crows that like to uh, sit on the roof of my house and they like to chat. So you might hear an occasional, <laughs> like very loud, what? obnoxious cause. Uh, are, uh, is your house just a, a really good gathering place? Are I'm there a druid. Who... <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, that makes sense now. I have a lot of wildlife around my house. I have the crows. I have lots of diff different birds, hummingbirds, butterflies, a fox, a uh, badger, I think at one point. Oh, no, groundhog. Badger, groundhog. badger, 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 badger. I think that's badger, why badger. I went to badger. Uh, groundhog, deer, black bears, um, muskrat, um, frogs. <laughs> the whole You've talked about the frogs. I do remember that. Uh -huh. uh, but holy, holy mackerel. Yeah. And those are just uh, the animals outside. <laughs> well, th those are good to start with. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, and we've got questions. Already? Uh, oh, my goodness. We've got questions. Yay. Yay. Well, you know, it's it's been a busy day. Um, Anath... An 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 oh, geez. Mm. Anathan Skyfell. There oh, we go. There we are. Question. Can Havilar currently accept a death ward? If she has been made a part of the actual process of death itself as a champion, would death ward have any meaning? That's a good question. I have no clue. If she is alive, I can death ward. If if you are living, I can death ward you. Yeah. And that's all Orkira cares about. <laughs> I think that's a TBD because we don't know what her state is yet, do we? We just yeah. know she was there. Yeah. Also, I think at this moment, uh, me knowing, I think the only reason Orc Hero would know that that is Havilar is that for, I think Farida announced it. That's, mm -hmm. I think she said something like, she moves just like her. That's she moves just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, otherwise there's there's no reason to, to know right. because she's in some armor. I mean, True. I guess we could probably recognize the mount that she's on, although that hasn't Ew. been said. So I'm not going to assume right. yeah. anything. Um, but yeah. Hey, listen, at this so, point, yeah. we at least know that this person is helping us. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, specifically to your question, um, would it matter? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 
I mean, as it is, Orkira isn't death warded because she's got other things. So she's been like busy. <laughs> well well, she literally has other things. If yeah. it comes up in, in the game, we'll see. Yeah. Uh let's see. The lurking writer has name suggestions. Cabernet or cab a uh, pronounced cabinet or cabernet, dealer's choice. I mean, I I, I completely went for cabernet for a wine cask mimic, which is which is pretty darn good. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, uh, okay. I'm like, I, <laughs> okay I think I might be close. I, I, I've I, learned yes. the moment that I'm about to say, I think I got it as far as like putting a color on, mm -hmm. that's when I notice spots that I've missed. Yep. So I feel like what happens is I start to say it and then I intentionally start looking for the spots that I missed and then I stop saying uh -huh. it. It's just like, all right, I'm going to tempt fate, but not actually say anything to fate. And we'll see if fate helps me find the parts that I missed. Are we also getting that little peg on the top? Uh, yes. Okay. I wasn't sure if that was also... I haven't gotten that section, the... yes, but yes, that does get the uh, same color. And I do know what the technical term is for that one. We're not talking about it. <laughs> the hole in the keg. Yes. That's that's what it is. That's all we need. Um. All right. Is this also going to include this back yes. section? Yes. Aha. Yep. yep. Asking all the important questions. You are. Also, as I asked that, you turned it around and I could see it. And so I'm like, I'm just going to keep asking the question because people <laughs> in chat would like to know. I always assume there's at least one person like mm -hmm. me in chat who's having that same question because it makes me feel better. I mean, you're never alone in this world, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that hit me uh, kind of hard. Oh, geez. Uh, I need to sit down for a minute. Oh, okay. I'm just going to have Breathe. a drink. Mm. Breathe. I, I didn't know I was going to be hitting the feels today. Sorry. No, don't, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. Just... And now I've got you'll never walk alone in my head. <laughs> mm. But yes, uh, I often, I don't mind asking the questions that might be the obvious ones because I'm like, well, it might not be obvious. If it's not obvious to me, it might not be exactly. obvious to other people. Yeah. Mm. And plus people pick up on different things than others might. So there's where your outside of the box thinking comes in because someone has a different thought than others and suddenly you're looking at something in a whole new way. Mm. Or in this case, out of the keg thinking. Out of the keg thinking. Mm. Although with a mimic keg, I don't want anything coming out of the keg. <laughs> That's true. That's mm. true. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't want to be drinking anything out of a mimic. No. Although that does beg the question, could a mimic mimic <laughs> so well that it could actually not create, but maybe get filled with something? That's a that's a question. Hmm. I don't know. Chat, what do we think? If if a mimic was a good enough mimic and made a, let's say a refillable cask, someone's going to come along and instead of this being a new cask, they're going to refill it, which I know is not a thing, but go with me here. Could they actually work as a actual keg? The whether you should or not, that's a completely different question. See, my brain's going to the whole thing like, these are sticky. You get near them and you stick. So yeah. does that mean what makes them sticky? Will that dissolve into the liquid? I don't know. <laughs> Maniac Clown says maybe an old enough one could render itself food safe. Food safe. Oh my gosh. Mm. So, because I know, um, I think it was in Tasha's. But one of the more recent books talked about like colonies of mimics mm -hmm. and it had that art of the two people on the porch of the right. house mimic. So obviously they can't be too stuck to the, the right, house right, because, yeah. you know, so there, there must be ways for mimics to, to get that good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Jonathan Skyfall says absolutely yes. And, and so there we go. Done. Dunsies. Speaking um, of Dunsies, I think I'm Dunsies oh. with the keg. Yeah, I got one more a little bit to go here, and then I'm going to be done. Okay, so I'm going to move from the keg to, where'd it go? The chest. 
<laughs> Never like, lose sight of your mimic. I'm like, that, that's if the chest just walked away, I have a problem. <laughs> mm-hmm. okay. um, so I using the same it. leather brown. This is, since we're going to make this gold, we want to get a base color on this before we go with the gold. Because sometimes if you use straight up gold, it kind of doesn't look quite as weathered of a metal. Mm. So I'm going to put the leather brown on first and then we will dry brush the gold on for a really neat gold effect on the Ooh. metal bands. So All right. We're going to keep going with this leather brown. And now we're basically doing the opposite of what we were just doing because mm -hmm. we're only doing the bands. Yeah. But basically for this one, you're going to need to definitely be using a detail brush. Mm -hmm. Go a wee bit more slowly because we are dealing with right next to the gaping maw, toothy maw, the maw, yeah, less... <laughs> the maw. Yeah. Mwah. With that tongue. You? This is definitely not one that is at least in the mood to be a mm -hmm. uh, completely accurate mimic yeah. or a completely accurate chest. It is it is 100% here to kill you. Oh, yeah, totally and completely. It not messing around. Mm. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be poking at this for a while. Oof. <laughs> Uh, Lurking Writer says, this begs the question, do mimics' digestive systems work the same way that other organisms do? If yes, then no, they can't hold liquid. Okay. that th Well, that is also assuming that the inside of the keg mimic is the mimic's stomach and not just more of the mimic. Like, I've always assumed that any exterior parts of a mimic mm -hmm. including like even the the interior of the chest mm -hmm. was basically the exterior of the mimic like their skin okay because otherwise you're exposing your innards aren't you and that Those would be weird innards to the outers <laughs> yeah and that can't be good for anybody involved including the mimic but well, maybe so. i'm wrong yeah i mean once again do we really want to get into the specifics about uh, right. anatomy or is it is this the moment because it's kind of fun to think about but there's always that moment where you gotta go just repeat to yourself it's just D, &D. i should really just relax mm -hmm. to to use the mystery science theater axiom yeah because yeah it's fun to think about these things and then eventually you have to go it's magic it's magical it could be magic do 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 and i'll stop <laughs> and stop there and can't get me <laughs> that's what i feel like every single time i sing a little bit of a jingle that's all you get you can't get me now mm-hmm mm -hmm. don't come out yeah we should stick to just singing jason charles miller uh idol champion songs <laughs> that is all we're i don't allowed have his to sing. voice though <laughs> oh me neither that's that yeah. is I, I mean, I don't have anybody's voice, really. But hey, you know, at least those are songs that we could sing the whole thing. There you go. And no one could come after us because they're ours. <laughs> <laughs> Can we both just mwahaha -ha at the same time? I love it. <laughs> I love it. Uh, our, our evil plan of singing uh, uh, Jason's uh, uh. songs. Okay, wait. Up, up. Yeah. Oh, and now I, Irene UK wants to know, V, are you going to be on Bardic Inspiration as vocals soon? Aw. Aw, thank you. Um, I believe that just boils down to, uh, ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's still hard to do um, coordinated yeah. singing over Twitch. That is still a challenge. Oh, it's tricky, tricky, tricky. Yeah. There is, there is just enough lag to make mm -hmm. it very noticeably impossible. Uh, I mean, because I have tried. Have you tried? I was gonna say, have you tried singing "Happy Birthday" in a Zoom call? Mm-hmm. Y'all. Yeah. That that <laughs> always and and it's always one of those where it kind of starts off, and you're thinking, "Oh, hey, we got it. Got we can it. do this." And then within about a second or two, you're like, "Oh, nope, we nope, don't, we don't nope, got it. It went away. Nope, nope, nope." And then either you have to choose to be the person who just forges on ahead to get to the end of it. Or you give in and you uh -huh. just get slower and slower and slower as you try to resync with everybody. And then eventually everyone stops. Mm -hmm. And then you've won singing happy birthday. Yes. I just <laughs> jump in at the very end with you. <laughs> there you go. I have been in those calls in where people just keep slowing down. I'm like, well, all right, 
let's see if we can bring this to a stop before the the song ends because uh-huh. this is amazing. For some reason, I feel more comfortable. Um, like th- this is definitely delicate work trying to paint these uh, these bands without getting on the brown or getting on the anywhere else. Mm-hmm. I feel more comfortable when I'm on a curve than when I'm on a straightaway. That's interesting. Yeah, like I'm I'm doing the side of the chest right now and doing the little curve at the top. That was just like ah, but the straightaway on the bottom, I'm like oh god, here we go. Yeah, no, I understand that. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Oh, I should look. Oh, we have an update from Lee. For those of you who are watching Griddle Champions Yay! and saw the catastrophe that happened. Yes, I did. I did it. I did it. Lee says they posted the flip of the pancake on Twitter Woo-hoo! and they are upset. I mean, uh, you are a mod, Lee, so you should go ahead and just put that yeah. link to your Twitter to that tweet here in the chat because uh because we should all see it because i know what you were drawing and i'm excited to see what you were is it drawing is the right word for pancake art i don't know that's a good question um creating there you go i like that creating we should we should all see it because um yeah we missed it on the stream but that doesn't mean we have to all miss out exactly like there we go oh there we go, Trevor. Trevor on. Look at Trevor. Trevor. On the ball. Ooh, it's a video that even includes the flip. Ooh, now we're. I am impressed. Fancy. I am so impressed. Oh, it's so amazing. We work with fun people. I I don't know if I should spoil it. No spoilage. I, I mean, I mean, I guess it's out there. You can see it, but right, right, uh, right, right, right. it it is it is the comic. It is the moment, or it's not an exact moment because this exact moment didn't happen, but it is all of us as owlbears, which made me so happy. It was so much fun. Or Kira hated every minute of it, but I was super happy. Uh, But yes, you should definitely go check out the comic uh, because it is adorable. And that's kind of the fun of the comic is sometimes you can just take what would have been a funny moment and and make it happen in the comic, even if Mm -hmm. it didn't happen in the game. Like we totally would have done that. Oh, completely. we totally would have just run up to have and be like, "Look, we're owl bears. Don't you recognize me?" <laughs> but I think it's just too darn sweet. I mean, mm-hmm. And yeah, the detail that Lee got on the pancake is amazing. Oh, it, there's a please. ton. Yeah, when you when you see the actual comic get posted, mm. there's a ton of detail in there that you are you are all going to love. Yes, I'm trying to get. Uh, the stuff under the tongue. Oh, this is hard. This is this is definitely an an awkward place to try to paint, but I'm doing it. It's happening. Anyway, thank you for posting that Let's video. See. Thank you for making that video for all of us. Sorry you had um, computer problems, especially right there, right at the end. But uh, we love you, and we're happy that you got the got the flip. Yes, absolutely. And I just got some brown on the on the purple, so I'm gonna fix that real quick. Ah. <laughs> he has thrush. <laughs> there we go. Hold on. There we go. Just 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 fixed. Oh yeah, Graphic Wolf is talking about the shading and the details. That's that's the thing. Like you think pancake art, and I think most people think of very simple shapes and objects and things. And Lee just makes, makes art, art. With, with shading and everything. It is amazing absolutely um yeah sorry i was just going to it again it's okay oh okay uh lee says some genius wired our kitchen in my office on the same breaker so making lunch for miles and raising the heat to cook oh oh no Mm. which explains why it would happen right at the end like you know you're trying to you're trying to do stuff uh, in the office, and then someone someone turns on a toaster and <laughs> yoink, yoink. That happens sometimes for me. I'll be vacuuming, and <laughs> it turns off the breaker to the outside fridge. Oh wow! Like um, that's a problem. So like I can't plug the vacuum in 
the outlets that are in the bathrooms. Don't ask, but that's the trick. <laughs> outlets that are in the, the mm -hmm. outlets that are in the bathrooms. The are outlets the ones that, that are, are in the bathroom are the also... ones that will flip if I use the vacuum and the fridge is running at the same time. Because like just apparently for the that, outside fridge. Yeah, apparently that refrigerator is on the same line or whatever for those yeah. outlets for the bathroom. That is so that that is it so boggles weird. Boggles my mind. I mean, I'm I'm no electrician. I don't build houses, so what the heck do I know? The only thing but I can think just... of is like GFI factors, because they're all in the GFI. I don't know what that is. Ground something indicator. Ground. Crap. It's basically it's like to protect you from like you know water exposure, electrocution, and that type of oh okay badness. It's why they're usually found in bathrooms and in kitchens, and sometimes you have to push a little tab to reset it in the outlet okay. itself. So any any place where you might have water and electricity at the yes, same time. exactly. That makes sense. Ground fault indicator? Interrupters. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, original act. Ac just, just as I got the fault part. <laughs> yeah. Thank I, you. Thank you. See, this is why Chad is helpful. And you are not distracting from the painting. You Absolutely you are not. always welcome. And this is half the show is us painting and the other half is us just chatting with the chat. That's mm -hmm. really what the show is. Because a lot of the time we're doing this, which is fine detail work. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think I'm there. Oh, wow. I'm I think about I to get got the other it. side. Well, I've been doing a lot of talking. So I was doing a lot of painting. There you go. <laughs> but yeah. I also am the person who I think I'm done, like I said before. And oh, I'll be right. like, oh, I, I missed a spot. Oh, I'm a, I missed a spot. A spot. Oop, there's a spot. I, did, I do also see brown, the dark brown stuff that mm. I missed. Mm. You could always go in with just some beastie brown then and touch up those yeah. spots. Yeah, I might do that because they're, they're in just like corners and things as I was trying mm -hmm. to get um, all the straps and make sure, because some of these bands, you also kind of have to go on the side to get them. Yeah. And that's where I was noticing. That's uh, fun stuff. Yeah, a couple corners, a couple places where it's like, hey, you didn't put any paint here. Mm -hmm. And and you didn't put any paint here. And mm -hmm. you didn't put any paint here. It's like, well, darn it. Okay. Yep. Beastie Brown, here we go. Oh, and now everybody's talking about breakers and breaker. uh, checking your clocks. And yeah. your smoke alarms. Oh, yeah, that's true. And smoke alarms. Yeah. And yeah, for those of you who might have missed it, uh, time change happened in the United yeah. States on Sunday. It's... Um, and so we are now a completely different time than we were last week for those of you who are in, say, Europe. So sorry. It's, that it's been, has been a fun. week. For scheduling mm -hmm. purposes, because I realized I had to do a schedule for um, someone UK based. And I was like, oh, hold on. You're not your usual distance of the future from me right now. Yeah, I got to think of something else. I have to do a slightly different time conversion. I have to remath it. This is one of the reasons whenever I'm talking about I'm in the Pacific time zone, mm -hmm. I, I don't worry about PST or PDT. Mm -hmm. I just say Pacific. Yep. Same. I just say it because uh, it's just easier and more clear that way, in my opinion, but yeah. I don't know. But I don't know. But yeah, sorry if if um sorry if you missed a little bit of us. We've we've changed times. Oops. I think I've recovered from the time change. I think I'm pretty much there. The last couple of days I've been getting up back at my normal time instead of yeah. the alarm going off and me going <sighs> Yeah, this morning I was up before my alarm. That's usually how I know I'm back to normal. Ah, that makes sense. I think I passed out like mid mid sentence. Like, you know how, cause well, okay. You may not because see, I'm the girl who has a whole bunch of friends on the Pacific side of things and I'm on the East coast side. Mm -hmm. So there'll be times where I'm texting a friend for them. It's only nine o'clock at night for me. It's past midnight. So I know there have been times where I'm like, I type out a message and I think I'm typing it out and then I just fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It took a while when I moved out here for my parents to stop messaging me at mm. uh, awkward times because mm -hmm. yeah, I live on the West Coast and they live on the East Coast. And every once in a while, it would be like six o'clock in the morning and my phone would vibrate. And I know 
that if somebody is either going to call me or text me at that time in the morning or earlier, either someone's butt dialed or <laughs> something has gone wrong. Right. And so I will actually answer the phone. Yeah. Everything else, I'm just like, I don't know. But like at that time, and oh, there was, there was a couple of weeks when I first moved out here where practically every week I got a call mm -hmm. at like five o'clock in the morning. It's like, well, you're usually up at this time. Yes, in your time zone. I still have yeah. three more hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I should take a moment and come back over here. Mm -hmm. And sorry, you, got, sorry. you got the front portion, right? This area? Yeah, that okay. part under under the mouth. Ugh. Yeah, just making yeah. sure that didn't get lost. Nope, I got it. Cool. I, I did get that. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I'm just going to take a second. Hi, Nubel76. Ooh, just happened to be looking over when people were saying hi. Hello, hello. Uh, the Lurking Writer says, question, purple tongue on your mimic, Lauren? Just wanted to know if that's accurate or if my screen is messing with the image. Um, so, yeah, I w went for, it's we both kind of went for purple. I went for a little bit more of a darker, more obvious purple. Um, V's, I think, is slightly more of a reddish purple. Like a plum. Yeah. He's plum. Uh, I just like it. It's fun. It's just cool. Yeah. It's a monstery. Okay, I think I have all the leather brown where I want the gold band to be. Okay. So I'm happy. I'm happy with that. All right, now, what is next? Uh, now we can... Hmm, do we want to do... Yeah, let's move over to black because I don't want to too, do too much work on that chest while it's still drying. So we're going to move over to black and we're going to do the bands around the keg. Okay. And the... um. Well, how I like to interpret the nails in the stand. So sticking with the detail brush, yeah. going for straight up black, which any color, black, that's what you want. <laughs> Regardless of Nice brand. and easy. Yeah. Let me okay. keep it simple for you. Oh, sorry. I hit the camera shaking my paint. <laughs> that happens. I need to get, a, I need to get one of my kids to take a picture of me when I'm fully set up so people can see just how much is like here. <laughs> Yeah, the amount of stuff that you are not seeing that is below this this line right here, I mean, there's a lot. There's there's much <laughs> happening. There there is a, a ton of things plus a lot of paper towels because this is also my work desk. So, mm -hmm. all right, black on Wait. stuff. Where black are we going? On the bands. Okay. So all of this is going to get black. I'm treating it like wrought iron. Ah. And are we also doing on the, the wavy arm bits? Yes. Yes. I, I see a mimic and I want to paint it black. I see <laughs> a mimic and I'm going to paint it black. And that's all you get. Well, no, because now it's parody. Oh, okay. That's right. It has a nice long tongue that's going to go thwack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Very nice. We should. I, I already know there's a Mimic song on mm -hmm. Bardic Inspiration, but you know what? Oh, yeah. Mimic Mimic 2. We'll do a second song. <laughs> Mimics deserve multiple songs. I mean, yes. Although, frankly, my favorite version of that song is the version that's in the first season of Westworld in the soundtrack. Oh, that one's haunting. Yeah, the orchestral version. Yes, I love which it. Which starts with a bassoon solo. It's, it's like huh? stunning. It's so good. Oh, it's stunning. It's, it's so well done. And, and it's a testament not just to how good of a a show that is and mm -hmm. how good of an arrangement that is, but how good of a, a, an original song that is. Because there's a lot mm -hmm. of songs that do not work as instrumental versions mm -hmm. that are great songs. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful songs. But um, in order for it to really work as an instrumental, you can't really have the same note repeated a lot because that gets a little boring. Yeah, it gets and so, a little. <laughs> yeah. And so any of your favorite songs where, you know, think about it the next time you're singing along or listening, if there's sections in where you're kind of singing the same note a couple of times while you're saying different words, totally okay in a song with words. Yeah. But if there's no words. Exactly. Get the staccato so, factor. 
yeah, it's just it's just so good when when they get it right and they mm -hmm. pick a good song that's that's oh, yeah. gonna work. Oh. Right. I think I may have watched that show a little bit longer simply because of the intro song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to be well, honest. First, yeah. Well, the first season was absolutely amazing. It was. Second season, I got that lost effect. The show lost, not uh. that I got lost. I started feeling like I was watching Lost again. I'm like, I don't like not fully comprehending and constantly second guessing and it ah, yeah i don't okay. know it just wasn't it wasn't my thing for other people who enjoyed it i am happy for you i am glad you found enjoyment that is fantastic for me i just knew it's like okay i'm done yeah and it's okay to be done well and i had an interesting experience because luke and i were watching that together mm -hmm. and uh, i'm not going to claim that i understood everything or that i'm somehow super smart but i was able to kind of follow along in the second oh, season that's good so i enjoyed it a lot but he was having the same problem you were and we're just trying to parse mm -hmm. the time jumps and you know whose point of view was was going on it's, i mean it's not obvious by now slight spoilers for westworld um i'm trying to talk obliquely so yeah, hopefully you're still good yeah hopefully tiny minor spoilers um but yeah like we'd get to the end of an episode and he would ask questions of like, so wait, when did this happen? Mm -hmm. And I would understand, at least I thought I would understand when stuff had happened. Mm -hmm. And so I guess I was picking up on those visual and, and auditory cues in a, uh, a better way. And, and then also when I didn't, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, I was not bothered by it. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know why it was just uh I, so when we got to the end of season two i was like okay cool let's give me season three let's do this mm -hmm. and then and then nothing and then there's been nothing and i need my season three i should look into if they've even announced a, that's a, a new point. season has this become a thing that's just sort of left floating in the water yeah well and um that was all done before the pandemic. Right. So they probably weren't, if, if there is a third season, they probably weren't even beginning to film mm -hmm. because the show came out. Uh, True. So yeah, that, that might've been one of those that got, if, if there is a third season planned that got mm -hmm. uh, the pandemic trouble. Um, yeah, I mean, if anyone in chat knows if- Yes. If I missed, because I, I could definitely have missed it. I am not necessarily the person that keeps up on all of the things. All right. I'm, How dare. I am so behind on everything. Mm -hmm. I am going to get you, you piece of band that's right there. That is not oh. the way I saw that comment going, but okay. Uh, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. There's a, a bit of the band that's at the bottom of the keg. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm like completely out of frame, but I got to get this. It's under, it's like at the bottom of the keg where the keg and the stand meet, but it's a corner. <sighs> I'm gonna get you. Gonna get you, get you, get you, get you. It's like, I see it. I'm gonna get it. It's gonna happen. All right. Not. Okay. Okay. Green. All right. Sorry, everybody. I don't mean to be off <laughs> I have to go from under camera because I keep hitting the camera with my paintbrush. <laughs> One moment, please, folks. Whereas my camera is there, but like I'm, this is where my light is, and this is where um, I, I, I get to give you the ASMR because my microphone is light all the way goblin. over there. Mm -hmm. But yes, if you do have any questions in chat, while we are super hardcore paying attention to what we are painting, uh, we have the fabulous Trevor in chat passing along questions so that every once in a while when I come up for air. <laughs> When I come up to stop painting these bands, I can check our questions document because, you know, otherwise we'll just keep talking about Westworld. We will. And then we'll get into spoiler ter territory. And we got to try not. You know what I found interesting about Westworld? That introduction mm -hmm. was such a pivotal, pivotal words, pivotal mm -hmm. switch in terms of um, what people were doing with their introductions before shows. It yeah. was interesting to see how others were starting to adapt that concept into their own the whole like morphing and the um almost liquid like transitions it was interesting 
Yeah. Well, HBO had been doing some really uh, neat title yeah. sequences. You know, Game of Thrones did the same thing yeah. where, you know, they, they went with a theme and they used the theme mm -hmm. of, you know, the, the, the clockwork stuff to yeah. tell not just a story, but like show you places and kind of help you along with all of the important locations. And then as seasons went on, th what stuff would show up in the um, opening would help you know what locations were going to happen in the actual show, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that was definitely another clever one. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate anyone who can put some time into an opening sequence. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the openings can get boring after a while. So if you... Uh, you don't necessarily have to change them up, but if you can keep them, if you can make something really unique and enjoyable, then you don't, uh, you don't uh, skip it. There we go. Yes. Words. Skip introduction. Yes, please. Whereas, whereas on the opposite side, the Muppet Show, you never skip the introduction oh. to the Muppet Show. Bum, bum, bum. Never. It, that little uh, skip comes up whenever we're watching the Muppet Show and I'm just like don't you dare how dare that's rude how how could you even no I want to see I want to see everyone singing and I want to see what happens with Gonzo's trumpet you will not skip this no. heresy I say mm -hmm. agreed I forgot how finicky these bands were yeah they they do the same thing that the frog hemoth did with the mm -hmm. the tentacles and where they swoop around and then all of a sudden you're like oh i have to get under there i'm still doing like the straight around the barrel ones who are we kidding here oh before i forget i always do a little black dot here like where the nails would be ah i kind of treat those and it'll make more sense as we get around to the front so i treat these as long iron nails and just a bloop and a bloop that's cool Oh, Missouri says that they watched the opening to Peacemaker all the way through on every episode. Is that another one that has, is that the- It has like the, 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 why am I the dancing? <laughs> it has the, the. Luke watched that one, but that one I, I missed out on, mm. but that is. Fair. I guess everybody just loves to dance. I mean, mm -hmm. a little boogie. Everybody loves a good dance sequence. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I, I'm just talking to my mimics now. I'm just you're like, You're reminding right. me of uh, Dory in Finding Nemo. With the, <laughs> with the jellyfish. I'm gonna, I'm get, gonna you. get you. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna get, get you. you. Yeah. I, that was not my intent, but now I will own that. Sure. I'm, I'm happy about uh -huh. that. I'll, I'll, I will accept this. I am I thought I am it was well such an pleased. endearing part. Mm-hmm. Is like one of my favorites. I haven't seen that movie in forever. Finding Nemo was one of the few movies. Here, here we go. Ooh. Today is learn about Lauren's history. Okay. Finding Nemo was one of the few movies I got to see in the theater early as a movie critic. Ooh. Because there was a brief moment in my life. I wasn't a movie critic as as a profession, but I was one of the jobs that I held while I was in Florida was mm -hmm. I worked uh, doing a radio show that was nationally aired and was a four hour show that uh, was aired on the weekends. And we would usually record like the week before. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a geek show. It was called Sci-Fi Overdrive. And we we covered any geek stuff. We had guests and we did interviews and we did movies and books and shows and games. And if it was geek adjacent, we talked about it or reviewed it or did it. And we got on a couple of the lists of, I guess, journalists, mm -hmm. which is another word I never use for myself, but hey. Uh, but people to get the invitations to go see the movies early. Uh -huh. And we kind of split up the the movies amongst us with like, all right, what are you the most interested in seeing? Cause you'd, you'd only get a certain number of passes. You wouldn't get, um, like if there was four of us on the show, right. we still only get two passes. Hey Lauren, so you kind of hmm? how far did you get with painting the bands? I just realized these are supposed to be wood too. I had a brain hiccup. 
So this one is supposed to be the leather brown, but if not, we can make them black anyways. I'm about, uh, I'm on band number two. <laughs> okay, then we're just gonna make these as band extensions. <laughs> okay. I mean, that makes sense to me. The, the black totally makes sense to me because those are, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. I just saw the wood detail on this one and my brain's like, oh yeah, that's right. Oops. Uh, <laughs> well, now, now I see a wood band and I want to paint it black. Mm -hmm. There you go. Anyways, you're very I, cool. I totally forgot what I was talking about. You were talking about, about the uh, no. show that you I, were doing and you got Oh, Sci-Fi Overdrive. Passes. Yeah. Yes. So we got press passes and so we'd split up the movies that we would get to go see early as reviewers or as press or whatever. And Finding Nemo was one of the ones that I got to go see. I got to go do that. Pirates of the, the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Ooh. That King Arthur movie. With Kira Knightley? Uh, that one? Uh, no. Oh. All I remember of it is the, the scene where they're all on the, oh, uh, they're all on the frozen lake. Anyway. um, And one of the, whichever one of the disaster movies uh -huh. uh, that came out that that summer that there was the two different it was like the day after tomorrow and the other one <laughs> i i think i saw the day after tomorrow it was the one uh -huh. in where even after there were hardcore hurricanes and tornadoes and all kinds of weather phenomenon the end of the movie the the final confrontation at the end of the movie was with a bunch of timber wolves in new york city and i was just laughing i was like the entire world is in an upheaval. You've had all of these amazing uh, shots of you know, killer hurricanes and stuff, and you're going to end with timber wolves. Okay. I, how? It was it was a movie, but I got to see it for free. So hey, and then I talked about it in the show. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so, some of the movies I saw were amazing, and some were not so much. Not so much. But that was that was a brief. A brief moment of my life. There you go. This has been, this is your life with Lauren. This of the many, many jobs cool. that I've held over the years. Gosh, yeah. Come on. Come on. I'm trying to get the end of this little spindly guy right here. And I'm having, I'm having that trouble again. We've, oh. we've run into these antenna problems before of like, I'm trying to paint you. Why do you keep moving? Oh, yes. When you get into the weeble wobble. Mm-hmm. Weebly wobbly. I forgot all the details that went into these onions. Do you have a sides to get, too? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm... I was probably not the correct person to send to some of those movies because I, the other thing is I don't watch a lot of movies. So I'm not familiar with a lot of actors and actresses. So when mm. you get to that moment of like, I remember this was a King Arthur movie, but it was an unremarkable movie. And that is all I remember. And, <laughs> so then it was the Kira Knightley one. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. Why, when V said to so the Kira Knightley one, I'm like, I, yes, no, maybe, I don't maybe. know. <laughs> <laughs> but chat is saying, um, the guy from Pacific Rim, the King Arthur film with Liam Neeson and Helen Mirren, Excalibur, or the King Arthur film with the vicious, nasty killer rabbit. Not the vicious, not the good one with the vicious, nasty killer I rabbit. I say, that one sounds cool. Yeah. This would have been in the early 2000s, 2001, 2002, because that's when I was in Florida. So whenever there was a King Arthur movie that came out around then in the summer, well, actually it might not have been the summer, but just around the early 2000s, that's the movie I saw. Mm -hmm. And Finding Nemo and pirates of the caribbean and those were those were the awesome ones those were the standout of like yes i'm seeing amazing movies uh and then disaster stuff but it was fun you know there's something about going to see a movie not just to enjoy the movie but also uh i'm about to get paid to talk about this that is neat like and not even really review it just ah, just talk about it yeah even when it's a very unremarkable movie, there's something kind of fun about that. Yeah. I mean, it's not an everyday thing for people. So it's a unique, a unique experience. Chat is confirming it is the Kira Knightley one with Clive Owen. Thank there you, we Chad. go. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so it would have been like 2003 because by 2005, I had already moved away from Florida because four hurricanes came through and the uh, Miami Symphony had gone bankrupt. 
and oh. I left. Oh, that's a whole other story that I can't go into on the air because it's going to take too long and <clears throat> it's not a fun story. So I'm hearing we bring this one up next. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> so this is a therapy session now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Little did I, you know. I, the few years I spent in Florida were tumultuous times. I don't regret it because regret in my in my experience and the way I think about it, mm-hmm. regretting that you did something in the past means you had all of the information at the time and you made a decision that was wrong. And when I think back to deciding to go to Florida, the all of the information I had at the time made it totally made sense. Yeah. Like I would have had to, you know, if I knew then what I know now kind of thing. And right. there's no reason uh, having regrets over it. And I learned a lot while I was there. And I had some Major. awesome experiences. And then the Miami Symphony yeah. went bankrupt. Until mm. that point. Yeah. Now, and then I, the four hurricanes. <laughs> I do tend to do this with this guy. I remember this little trick. I will push the arm up a little bit. Oh, yeah. To that get arm. the underarm pity. Mm-hmm. Got to make sure to get the underarms. So anyway, thank you, Florida. <laughs> thank you, Florida. That's not a turn of phrase I thought I'd hear recently. <laughs> there you go. Thank, thank you, Florida and Florida man. Mm-hmm. God, no, those are some searches. Yikes. Oh. Good Lord. Yeah, that was one of the other, very minor, but one of the other reasons I was glad to leave Florida was every time Florida man came up, I was the person all the friends called or mm. talked to or talked about. It was just like, hey, Lauren, there. did you hear about the latest Florida man? I'm like, please Maybe no. You know. Please no. I don't want to know. This is a big <laughs> state. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Keith G says, Lauren, the flip side is, Uh, If you had not done it, you may not be where you are today. This is very, very true. Um, If I had not gone to Florida, then a lot of the experiences I had there would not have become relevant later in life, or uh, I might have made different decisions. Absolutely. You You can never know. So I don't regret going. I just regret what happened. I just regret Kira Knightley being in a movie that was so forgettable that I I couldn't even remember she was in the movie. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I just forgot about Kiera Knightley. (gasps) Oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I mean, is she someone who's really important in your life? (laughs) No. No, but like at one point people were very Kiera Knightley focused on, you know. Hmm. She was one of the it girls. Is she not anymore? I don't think so. I, I mean, that's another I thing I don't keep up on. I have not heard of I'm not terribly good at it either. I'm also one of those people where I did not, as a, like, you know, preteen, teenage girl, I did not get the fascination with Brad Pitt and Tom Cruise. I'm like, they're dudes. <laughs> it's just like... Eh, I, I wasn't gaga over them, but I, I at least was like, well, they're pretty. And uh, I, I was like, like yeah, Brad they Pitt. look OK, but I did not get the fascination. Some like people were like, I'm going to marry him. I'm like, no, you aren't. What? Yeah. I'm going to marry them. Really? Really? How You're 12. That? Exactly. They're like 30. Exactly. And what's like state you've do you been think watching too legal? much interview with a vampire? <laughs> really? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The number of. People that I knew that turned into emo vampire goths right? after Interview with a Vampire yeah. and basically just wanted to be uh, in that movie. That was... See, I didn't go emo goth. I went to Extreme Bookworm and bought all of the Anne Rice books. I'm like, I'm going to read it all. I mean, they're they're good books. They so are. there you go. Yeah. I was debating. That movie's not too bad. No, it's not bad. It's just, it was funny. Like some, like some girls I knew, like genuinely like, I'm going to marry him. I'm going to meet him. And I'm like, okay, okay. I'm going to back away slowly. Yeah. I don't understand people's uh, fascination and then insistence on being able to get yeah. close to celebrity. Like legit got mad that Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston 
had married him like how oh, yeah. dare she i'm like you're mad you're mad at a person for finding what now really you're mad at someone you've never met yeah. who doesn't know you for yeah. getting married to someone else you don't know yeah you don't know and you've never met and doesn't know you this is you this is the the moment where you tell somebody listen you i hope you need to have bigger problems in your life yeah. because you are you are focusing on the wrong thing right that's where it's like you're kind of like are you okay <laughs> i need to put a little more black down oh i'm getting to that point too i forgot how guzzling these were no pun intended yeah there was a lot more black on this okay than i have I to go out from under camera because that's not happening with me anyway yeah so. that ain't it kid i also love how the chat has just turned into movie chat now yes welcome to movie oh. chat uh, Jonathan Skyfall says, I watched The Last Unicorn last night with my sister. The conclusion <gasps> is that all the tragedy was confronted by an immortal unicorn that learned how to regret. Yeah. I'm not saying there's, there are things I regret, but I don't regret, um, regret of decisions I've made in the past. If I think I had all of the information, I don't regret decisions I've made. There are things, there are decisions I've made in the past in where I knew all of the information and I made the wrong decision. And those I regret. Those I 100% yeah. have a regret for because I should have known better. But if I didn't know pertinent information at the time or if, you know, stuff changed, mm -hmm. then, then I don't really have, then I'm sad over it. I may be upset over it. I may have wished it didn't happen, right. uh, but I don't regret it. Regret, I think, and this is all personal. Regret comes with uh, shame, guilt, you know, negative feelings about things that I've done. And if I didn't know any better, hmm, when this turned into a therapy session? I, the, not this, maybe um, cathartic session. Mm. Catharsis, maybe. I hope so. I mean, I'm still having fun. We should probably just talk about the last unicorn. I thought we were supposed to keep this fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll talk about the never ending story. Wait, I thought oh, we were supposed to keep this fun. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> hey, I thought we were supposed to keep this fun. Oh. Yeah. I don't know why there's suddenly been a resurgence of like 80s and 90s movies mm -hmm. and like late 70s movies from my childhood of people suddenly watching them again. Because, oh my God, that's, that's so all the feels. I saw someone tweet, you ate, you you people who grew up in the 80s as kids, are you all right? Just been watching some of your movies and my heart. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. No lies detected. Yeah. I mean, what's that movie that came out with Patrick Swayze that was all about a group of high school kids when the Russians invaded? Like, there was that that happened. If you watch The Goonies, there's like- Goonies, yeah. There's all um, kinds of sadness that happens. Stand by me. Good Lord. Stand by me is dark. 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 Yeah. I don't care how much Will Wheaton is in it. There's a lot going on. And that's like a seminal movie from mm -hmm. that time period for young people. Yep. It absolutely is. I feel like it's the same thing with um, Brothers Grimm's fairy tales. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And where they're... Some of them are cautionary tales or like kids can take more than you think. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, Maniac Clown, Stephen King wrote the short story Stand By Me was based on, so that tracks. Yep, that, yep, yep, yep. That definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think his short stories are some of his best work. I agree. He definitely gets horror in short form that's not easy to do no that to me is one of the hardest writing genres out there is to create suspense and terror within just a few pages Whew. that's talent absolutely that's I, I i doff my cap to you sir yeah absolutely oh trying to get around these eyes are so hard it's tedious Mm. we're getting there we're, we're we slowly are. getting we there. are yeah irene uk gremlins is also a kids movie <laughs> yep 
Yep. And gremlins is kind of terrifying too. Uh huh. Oh my God. I was like afraid of furry animals after 12 at night. Yeah. For the longest time. Um, there was a movie. Okay. Here's, here's going way back for V. There was a movie when I was a kid. It was like this guy, there was a something over his face or he was like a monster or something. And his face like didn't have skin on it, but it was the muscles. I don't know what movie it was. It was one of those things I walked and my older cousins were watching it. So I was like maybe four or five. I was terrified to eat pizza because the person's face reminded me of cheese on a pizza. So there was like a period of time where I didn't want to go near pizza because it reminded me of this monster person. Mm Mm-hmm. I have no idea. I For a second, tell. I thought you were going to be talking about the Elephant Man. No, but that's a that's a much older movie, and and his face is his face is his face, but it's not yeah. like horror movie pizza it face. Was, it was probably some eighties, you know, B film type of thing. Yeah, something on basic cable. Mm-hmm. I just remember being terrified of this monster, and then being uh, terrified of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're getting some suggestions from chat about mm-hmm. what that movie might have been. I've got a Hellraiser, um, any of the Freddy Krueger movies, nope. Dark Man. Might have been Dark Man. Maybe Dark Man, because I have watched Hellraiser and Freddy Krueger, and nope, I, I remember those. <laughs> okay. All right. Yep, so probably some yeah. some nothing movie from from nowhere. <laughs> yeah, it's space balls. It was space, space balls, balls, and you were just watching Pizza the Hut. Pizza Hut. Yes. No, I that was so much fun though. Yep, uh, I love uh, I love that movie. Me too. It's... That and Young Frankenstein. Yeah, Frankenstein. 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 Frau Blücher, right? Right? Is that mm. it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. I think both of those are really good movies. I think, I think, um, Young Frankenstein probably holds up better. Uh huh. Because there's less jokes that are questionable, um, like not even questionable anymore. They're just flat out nope. Well, and not just nope, but also there's fewer jokes that are um, referential to the time period. True. This is true. So. Yeah, a lot of, I, I love Mel Brooks, but many of his movies uh, or his classic movies have a lot of humor that relies on the Being getting the current. joke. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and once it gets out of date, it's like, oh, this isn't as good. But a lot of his older movies mm-hmm. still hold up really, really well oh, yeah. because the the comedy is, is it's all there. It's just funny. Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles is still really good. I don't think I've seen that in, God, at least a decade. I saw that a couple of years ago. It was one of those where I think Luke put it on and then is like, well, I guess now I'm sitting in the living room watching this with you now. I didn't know this is going to be my day, but I'm okay mm-hmm. with it. Here I sit. Yeah, I've got whole quotes from that movie in my head. Oh, really? Most most of which I can't say on screen. No. I got to say, I'm impressed by people who are able to recall and quote from movies without like having to sit and think about it or watch the movie numerous times. I always find that such an impressive talent. Yeah. I mean, especially if they haven't watched the movie a ton of times. I, I have a couple of movies that I've got those kind of I can quote from, but they're mm-hmm. definitely movies that I've seen uh, more than once, which is yeah. odd for me as I usually do not rewatch movies unless it's something like, oh, this is Blazing Saddles and I haven't seen it in a decade. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fair. <sighs> I mean, I'm getting there. I, uh... I know I know the the black was kind of not what we were supposed to have on these arm bits, but I'm I'm kind of liking, liking it. it. Yep, I'm like, oh, that actually looks cool. more sinister. Yeah, I like it a lot. Oh, the lurking writer has a question. Inspired by the movie chat, is the thing a mimic? Oh, I'll allow Ooh. it. Also, thank you, Jonathan Skyfall, for gifting a sub. En- hey. Enjoy your. Uh, enjoy your emotes, everyone. Enjoy. I think I'm almost... And sorry, I'm just checking up on something real quick. 
you look in. My eyes are about to cross, and I okay. don't mean the ones on the mimic. Yeah, that's that's kind of why I took a stop, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to look and see if we've got any questions from chat. Oh, jeez. <laughs> the Neoma Rose. Let's talk about any of these traumatizing movies. Willy Wonka. <gasps> <laughs> right? <laughs> Good Lord. Ha. <sighs> Yeah, here's a billionaire who straight up murders children. Mm hmm And say has little cute little ditty songs happening about it at the same time. Like, what? Uh, mm hmm What? Straight up murder. I don't care how much they show afterwards that the kids are, quote unquote, okay. Although they don't show all the kids in the movie, I think. No. Mm -mm. No. But yeah, that is, that is definitely a cautionary tale. There's, there's a lot going on in Willy Wonka that is that boggles my mind mm -hmm. <laughs> absolutely okay so i think i have as much of the black banding done as the I can of the black banding yeah i'm at the moment where i'm just turning this all different oh, wait, ways in order to see if i've missed anything there is a spot yeah and garwar has now said willy wonka and the never ending story the 80s were all about trauma yeah 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 they were they were intense yo all right, what's next? What's what's next on Ooh. our um, therapy and painting sessions for today? <laughs> now we're gonna jump over to using <laughs> bone white, Ooh. and we're going to do the two furs on the chest and the okay. horns on the top of the head. Okay. So tooths and horns. Tooths and, and horns. And then we'll go over to horns. the tooths on the mouth on the keg, and then we're gonna do something else with the bone white. Ooh. Okay. Yes. Okay. So. Probably a decent amount of bone white. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And keeping the tiny, tiny toothbrush. Tiny, tiny toothbrush. <laughs> yes. Tiny, tiny, tiny toothbrush. Oh, I have bubbles again. <laughs> yeah. There we go. That's actually no. No. Yeah, pe so people are bringing up some good things in chat, which is mm -hmm. uh, in the 80s, that was a couple of things happened that made some movies that because uh, they're talking about how some some of these movies came out in the 70s, which is 100 percent true, mm -hmm. uh, like Willy Wonka. Um, that that's 1971. You're absolutely right. But in the 80s, what happened was uh, VHS tapes became very easily accessible. So people, a lot of people had VHS players and tapes and um, renting movies became uh, an easy thing most people could do. Yeah. And so you could suddenly see movies that you didn't get a chance to see in the theater be for whatever reason, very easily. And then also a lot of these movies just started showing up in various ways on uh, cable, cable television. Cable television, yeah. So yeah, just having the TV on on a Saturday or Sunday while you were, you know, doing nothing or, you know, taking care of, of random stuff over the weekend. And then all of a sudden you're watching Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. I think it, they became more prolific in the eighties, even though they came out in the seventies, they were everywhere for a period of yeah. time. Oh yeah, definitely. I watched that movie about the very, the documentary specifically about the, very last um blockbuster video mm -hmm. that's open wait there's one still open there is what? there's one still open yeah wow. i mean as of the last time i looked which was i think like a year ago they were still open they were still operational um this. and it's it's a really good documentary i'm failing mm. to remember the name of it <laughs> Sorry, I looked over at chat. Now I'm seeing uh, The Last Starfighter, which, yes, made yes. me want to play video games for a living. Right. Uh, Pan's Labyrinth. Oh, I love that movie. Pan's Labyrinth is so good. Was, Another yeah. one with excellent music. Um, E.T., yeah. There's there's moments in E.T. that freaked the hell out of me. Oh, um, wow. But anyway, the, the blockbuster, the last blockbuster that huh. documentary about that last one. It's a really good documentary and it's kind of bittersweet. Uh -huh. And they do a really good job of not just, it's not just about the last blockbuster. It's kind of just the, a full on documentary about blockbuster 
that uses the last one as a framing device. Oh, neat. Yeah, so it's it's pretty cool. So the whole culture of movie rentals, et cetera. Exactly. Um, and how Blockbuster even became a thing and mm -hmm. why. And, and they talked a lot about that, about the in the 80s, that was, uh, for a lot of people, the main thing that you did was, hey, we're going to rent some movies. Maybe you could rent a go VCR to too. If you got there early yeah. enough on a Friday, you could rent the VCR. Uh, by me, you could rent Nintendo games. Ooh. And there were Nintendo games that I rented oh, from. That's right. They Block did Buster. do video games. Yes. Yep. Forgot about that. Okay, it's it's teeth time. Here we go. Papers. I think I got all the uh top nubs. Yeah, I just finished the nubs, so I've I've moved to the teeth. Whew. And we're gonna do our best. Mm-hmm. Mm -mm -mm. This is all fine detail work, and yes, I'm I'm kind of I'm starting to get into the zen of it. I think. There you go. Oh yeah, Trevor is saying I rented so many N64 games when I was a kid over the summer. Good times. Uh, and Bonk Breath says I bought a Diablo one for PS2 from them. Yeah, because they would, they would um, buy back, right? They would buy and sell and trade, and then the ones that they were renting, the games they were renting, um, I don't remember exactly how it worked, but they would only rent them a certain number of times before they would sell the game. True. Yes. Uh, God, and I don't remember. It's all coming back to me now. You're right. It's all coming back. At you. Well, no. that's an appropriate song. Uh huh. So, yeah, it is. They they would eventually just sell the game. So every once in a while, I'd head on down there and see what was in the oh. used game bin. I love that we've moved from therapy to just remembering the 80s. I'm good with it. Oh, the brave little toaster. Who's talking about the brave <gasps> little toaster? I love the brave little toaster. Oh my God, Blanky. It's such a good movie. My heart breaks. My heart breaks oh, seeing you, Blanky. I know, every time. Every time. I haven't even thought of that movie in forever. I true story. I still have the blanket that I was brought home from the hospital in. Oh, <laughs> I still have it. Okay. Hey, if anyone has any questions that has had anything to do with painting or idol yeah. champions or anything like that, um, go ahead and put those in chat. Trevor is grabbing those to stick in the backstage chat so that I don't miss them when I'm trying to paint teeth and not paint a tongue. Paint teeth, but no tongue. This is this is a challenge. I can do this. Um, but yeah, go ahead and put those in chat. If you can put question in big capital letters before mm -hmm. it, it'll be a little easier for him to grab it to yeah. know that it is a question and not just uh, you opining on things. Which is also cool. Go ahead and opine. I mean, I've just painted the tongue. Ah, tongue painting. There's a That's lot happening in these mouths. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yep. I agree. <laughs> there we go. All right. The tongue is saved. I mean, I don't mind the teeth not being perfect because I feel like the teeth on these things should be kind of rough and, yeah, rah, and yeah, if they've got a little gnarly. purple on them, it's okay. But I just don't want any of that teeth on the tongue. That's, that's yeah, that's fair. Sure. That's a thing I said. Okay. Spikes and teeth, you said, right? Yes. Oh, I've missed some of the sides of the spikes. Yes, that will definitely happen. Hmm. Okay, I need to put this down for a second. I need to stretch. I need to drink, and I need to look. You know, at I'm thinking the same. Yeah. Hey, are, are, are we good to um, update on a certain something? Not that I've seen. I've been mm. keeping an eye on mm. on something. I'm just, but now now is a good time to stretch and, yes. and take a stretch break. And uh, yeah, because these are tiny little things that we're doing on tiny little mimics, and so I'm just gonna take a drink. Mm. All right. Ooh. Yoda ate my head. I have an IC question. Uh-huh. I know. 
Do patron chests include gear for champions I don't have unlocked, or will it work like weekend promo chests? As far as I know, it should only include gear for champions you do have unlocked, the, specifically patron chests. Um, Nails Aaron asks, what kind of brushes do you use for painting? I have some ceramic brushes, some very fine tipped. Would those work? Uh, if it is a brush that can hold paint, it is your vehicle for painting. I have used everything from makeup brushes to nail detail brushes to actual paint brushes to uh, hobby brushes. So hmm. that's sort of my opinion with brushes. Like this now, right here is a mac a makeup brush, a makeup brush. But it's fantastic for doing some really light dry brushing detail. So and if if you'd like to know specifically the brushes that we're using, yes. um, I will grab my cup as I say, go to our Discord, discord.gg slash idle champions. I'm kind of proud of myself that it took an hour and a half for me to get to that there point. There you go. Ooh. It's a thing. But if you come, if you come and join our Discord, uh, we have a channel that is specifically for paint and slay. And we have pinned all of the information, not just about what specific creatures we're doing, what specific minis we're doing each week, but the general, here's the stuff that you need week mm -hmm. after week. So paints, brushes, uh, the specific brushes we're using, the specific paints we're using, the, uh, you know, having paper plates and some cups and, you know, this and that and the other thing, and yeah. then specifically about what mini, and that way you can come and join us you every could. week, either live or on the video on demand. The VOD. The VOD, the VOD. The VOD. And, uh, yeah. And we try to um, keep that collection a reasonably priced collection. So yes. um, you're going to put down uh, just a little bit of money on getting the paints and the brushes and then I'm using the exact same stuff, and we've now done uh, one, two, three. Eight? We've done a lot of, yeah. No, more Including than eight, a couple. We've had double ups. Yeah, because the skeletons we had two, yeah. the mimics we had two, and the uh, myconids we had two. Yeah. And then there, there's was the I'm looking back at them. There's the Dargan, there's the Frog Hemoth, there's, uh, there's the, the Carrion Crawler, uh, the Carrion Beholder. Crawl. Who's keeping uh, count? Because I sure am not. That's 10. We've That's done 10. 10. Okay. Once Did we you count these. these two? Once we finish these two, okay. Once we finish these two, this this will be nine and ten. Oh, and you've moved on to the keg. What are we doing on I the keg? I am just getting the teeth on the keg. Just the teeth on the keg. Got yep. it. And I'm just going very lightly. It's almost like um kind of like dry brushing, but adding on more paint mm. to bring out those choppers. And I did see someone in the comments go by it. Of course it scrolled up, but I did catch the gist of it. In terms of if you're just getting started in painting miniatures, do you have to get Vallejo paints? No. Um, you actually can get away with using craft paints that you can find at Michael's from, you know, brands like Plaid. They will work uh, when you first get into learning how to paint miniatures. And it's actually far more cost effective if you're on an extreme budget. You can even go so far as to get simply black, white, yellow, red, blue, and brown, those six colors and mix your own paints to get a variety of different colors from there. And you'll probably be spending about $5 in paints. And those are usually four ounce bottles for the craft paints. They will work on miniatures. Once you get a feel for how the paints work on the minis and you realize, yes, I do like painting minis, then by all means you can invest in getting things like Vallejo, don't do army painter, um, Citadel, <laughs> things like that. Just a little quick blip about the paints before yeah. it drifted out of my line of thought and sight. Uh, ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that this might have actually been the comment that you saw um, from Nefarious. Hi, I enjoy your yes. stream a lot and thinking about getting back into painting. Thank you. Uh, and they're asking about brands of paint and looking into some big Vallejo paint sets right now, not cheap. So that's probably mm -hmm. the comment that you saw. Yep. Um, and Nail... Nalis Aaron asks, what's the most fun and most difficult minis you've ever painted? Mm. Uh, I mean, you have a lot to choose from. Um, uh, I did the Cthulhu. That was a really fun one that WizKids has. Um, and it was a lot of different color layers and everything like that that I did. And there's also this clear water detail to it, like the clear plastic to make it look all watery. So I had a lot of fun painting the water details. 
Um, it's actually, it's one of my uh, live stream series on my YouTube channel, if you ever wanted to go and check that one out. And that channel is The Crafting Muse. Okay, so. Okay, yes. Now we're gonna go. Now we're gonna go we're to gold. Close. We are, we're gonna go to gold. And okay. we're gonna like basically take a dry brush and lightly dab the gold on what will be the gold trim essentially. So it's more finite and controlled movements to have this happen, but it does look really pretty cool. Okay. Doing it that way. I think this is the first time I've cracked this gold open. So yeah. I'm going to be prepared to have to go get a pin. Yeah. Or also, I'm it's, a, a, hard it's time. a very oh, bright gold. Go. So this is a very bright okay. gold. Ooh. It, which is why I don't want to paint these like gold. Yeah. Because then it starts kind of getting into that uncanny fake valley. So that's why I'm going to do dry brush instead. Because then that just sort of highlights things a little bit so it looks golden, but you let that tan carry through. So it looks more aged. Yeah, because a mimic uh, would know better than to, brand. yeah, to look at a two brand new chest. Because yeah. then, then. Suspicious. That's sus. Yeah, your, your prey would get suspicious. Mm -hmm. Okay. Suspicious. Oh yeah, I see how much this this is a glittery yeah. kind of gold. Yeah, so this just sort of mutes it down. You still get a golden effect without it being like like Streets of Vegas gold. <laughs> it's like the best <laughs> gaudy that gold. Makes sense. Yeah, the the shiny kind of mm -hmm. fakish gold. Mm -hmm. I get it. I get it. And I guess. Uh, you don't need that much when you've got glitter. No. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Oh, that's right. Oh, it's also harder doing the, the dry brushing uh, on these thin little sections, but I guess I don't have to worry that about. That is where you actually use the side of your brush. What I'm doing hmm. is I'm taking the side of my brush and just sweeping it. Ah. Yep. So it hovers above and it gives you a little bit more control. That makes sense. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Yep. I was definitely having that moment of, oh, this I is uh, that's this is so thin. Mm -hmm. So light and thin. And if you want to, you could move to a detail brush and do a similar trick. Float it on its edge mm. as opposed to the point. That is another dirty trick. Well, not a dirty trick. It's another trick to painting. Yeah, there are no dirty tricks. Yeah, there's only there's only good tricks. Unfound techniques. Yeah. But I do like how this just gets a more golden look to it without it going very gaudy. Yeah, I've definitely got a, a couple places where I, I probably put a little too much on. Mm. Um, it's not too bad. I'm not upset yeah. about it. But the the places that are much more of the the dry brushed look have mm -hmm. that shine of it being gold without it being the gaudy. Gold. Oh, okay. Almost there. I like it. Uh, Legendary Dragon 75 is the E5 player book hard to learn. Oh, if you're talking about uh, fifth edition for D&D, &D, oh. um, I don't think so. What you have to remember is if, if you're looking to play D&D &D and you maybe you have the, the player's handbook and it's sitting in mm -hmm. your lap and it looks like there's a lot going on there, you don't need to know much of it and you don't need to memorize any of it because you can just have the book with you. Yeah. Um, and so it's good for a read through because you know this kind of stuff is fascinating, but don't try to memorize any of it. Don't try to remember everything. Just kind of give it, um, you know, give sections of it a read through. If you're looking yeah. to play a character, uh, see what character options jump out at you is like, oh, that sounds cool mm -hmm. or that sounds fun. And just, you know, Give it a, give it a nice casual read, but definitely do not think of it as something you need to study. And because uh, trust me, even those of us who have been playing fifth edition since it came out, we we get rules wrong all the time. We uh, forget Just things. Remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay. you got to look stuff up all the time. So do not worry about. Uh, becoming conversant, just look for stuff yeah. that you're you're excited about and exactly. you find cool. So this is with the gold dry brushed onto that area now. 
Ooh. You see, it's got a nice sparkle like gold, but it's not gold. Yep. I just got to get the front done, and I think that's I've got fair. And I'm going to jump all. over to silver and do the same thing to those iron bands. Just to kind of give it that um, sort of patina that iron can get. The is it oxidation? I don't know. I don't I remember the oxidation. technical term. Because iron bands can also, well, yeah, no, I wanted the silver. I was like, well, you could also make it look really rusty, but no, I'm going to do the silver. Yeah, old, but not yeah. disgusting old. Yeah. All right, you go live there. You come over here. Here we go. I got my not easily shown on my camera, but uh, you can actually kind of definitely see this is now a lot more gold than it was before. Mm -hmm. So I'm pretty happy. Yeah. All right. We're moving to silver, you said. Yep. And just lightly, I focus around the edges more for this one and like where there are the uh, rivets at the top. Bring those oh, yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, come here, Keg. Come here, Keggy. Keggy the Keggy. <laughs> the most unoriginal name, but I love it. Okay, now if I ever paint these again, I know what I'm naming the next pair. Oh? Hank and Peggy. Aw. I like it. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep, Hank and Peggy from King of the Hill. That's That's where my brain just went. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. Nope. Yeah, I'm still trying to name mine. So if anyone has any suggestions, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm definitely still looking. I'm still looking for a name that uh, jumps out at me. You want the name to jump out, not the keg or the mimic. <laughs> I mean, or why not both? Why? It's true. Why not both? It's interesting how this silver. It doesn't show up as much, even even with it just being a dry brushing, until like the mm -hmm. light hits it in just mm -hmm. the right way, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, hey, yeah, that's look at why that. I like doing it as like a little accent on the iron bands. We're gonna do something that sort of even morphs it further, which is kind of cool. Ooh, yes. I mean, we're getting towards the end, so we, we've got to be getting oh, towards. Yeah, we're getting close to things. If anything, we may not get to the like painting up the bases themselves, which in my land of when we do streams, because the bases are all pretty standard, you know, painted a dark color, dry brush with a lighter color, and you get your base. Yeah. It's more the mini and its main details that I want to make sure we hit before we uh, call it. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I just know if we're if we're getting close to the end, then we've got to be getting close to my favorite time and yours. Oh, washes. Washes. Wash. Time to wash. Time to wash. That takes care of the iron banding on my side. I've just got, I've got the front bit where the teeth are. <laughs> and, then, and then I will have caught up. Yay! So what I'm gonna do now is actually, and this is probably gonna be like, what? For some people, we're gonna have some fun with this. Now everything's getting a null oil wash on it when we are all said and done. So what I'm gonna do is very lightly go back with just straight up bone white. And I'm gonna use bone white to dry brush over where we haven't done the metallic dry brushing and the mouths. Like we're gonna skip over the mouths. I might do a little bit, we'll see, but that's why you wanna make sure your brush really isn't loaded that much. So you're going to do just a little bit. You don't want too much. This is a very, very light dry brush. And you'll just go in with the bone white and dry brush oh. the textures. So you can see that detail come out a little bit more. I need some bone white because my bone white got all dry. Ah! Oh. Dry, dry bone white. I mean, that is one of the things about using a paper plate is eventually the stuff mm -hmm. gets dry. But hey, you know... Uh, cheap and easy is always good. Yes. And sorry, I am doing three Multi things at once today. Yeah. Uh, also, I'm looking at all of the, the names that have just come up in chat. And for whatever reason, uh, now that I'm looking, everyone's just going chomp, 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 chomp. chompers, chompers, chomp, chompy chompers. 
uh, let me scroll back a little bit here. Uh, Patina. Oh, that's what we're talking about. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. The bar barrel is named Cooper. No, vi no other viable option. Ren and Stimpy. Mimsy. <laughs> uh, uh, the barrel one could be Roll. Wine. Yeah. Chomp Chompy. Audrey Three. Aww. That's fun. I I am kind of partial to Chompy just because it's I so mean, on point that it's, it it's actually kind of adorable. I agree. That is way too much paint. I've already done way too much paint. Yeah, you want very light amount here. And again, I do the same thing. I sort of play it up more on the edge when I do like just this straight up light color across everything. So do I, want, I might do a little bit around the mouth. Yeah, I'm going to do a little bit around the mouth here. Stand around. Yeah, because we already kind of went after that tongue. Yeah. So. I'm just doing just a light, light little amount here. I'm going to try to push this. Oof. Yeah, this might be the lightest dry brushing I have ever done. Yeah. Because just if, if I am just a little bit more off than what I think, mm -hmm. it's like, like nope you don't yeah. need to see anything anymore he's gone all right so i just finished up the keg doing that and now i'm gonna go to the chest all right same thing Make that just straight up bone white oh see now i want tacos tacos ah uh, irene your case is barrel win after barrel win <gasps> that's, I mean, that's funny. cute i like that's that. funny i like that i am here for this mm -hmm. content I think that might win. I think mm -hmm. bar barrel win might I, win. Yeah. I think Chompy and barrel win are my are my go tos here. Chompy, chompers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, how do I get silver all over me? Dry brushing. I I mean I guess, but. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second, I didn't have that much silver. What's going on? Yeah, that's true. I do always want tacos gray L shaped. That is 100% true. Nothing wrong with warming it with a taco. No, tacos all the time. The problem I've been having with tacos recently is that I am avoiding cheese. And so. Oh, um, that'll be a thing, yep. Yeah, and the cheese on tacos is it's not required. No. I've certainly had tacos without cheese because, you know, mm -hmm. tacos are delicious. But I do, I do miss that cheese. Okay, so I got these both with that light round of dry brushing. You can see it just sort of brings out those details. Yeah. A little bit more. Let me rinse this off. And then what I'm going to do, because, you know, remember, let's see if chat remembers, who is this going to go to? The keg mimic of mine? I remember. I remember. Does the chat remember? Chat remember. <laughs> you thought you were coming here for just a, a calming painting show, but what you got yeah. was uh, uh, psychology and movies and a pop quiz. I'm testing to see if I can do it. Oh, that is true. The lurking writer says we're not supposed to say like, oh, that's correct. Very good. Ooh. Very good. I may do this after I do the wash. So I can play around with that more. But this code is what's going to end up on this side here. Ooh. I just have to practice yeah. making it smaller. So I'll do that later off screen because that's going to be full chance. Yeah, that's going to be the tiniest. Yes. Of Are we uh, at the washing? Well, we still have some time because the washing won't take too long. We just put this dry brush on. I want to make sure this has time to dry before we wash. So okay. what I'm thinking, let's do the base, and that's going to be a mix of black and beastie brown, and we can just paint the bases in. You want a sure. very, you want a very dark brown, basically, is what we're going for here. All right, beastie brown and black. Yes, I am. I'm well pleased. A chat has not only it was not it was not a trap, no, but a chat has remembered that no, <laughs> they're not supposed to say who this is going to. Uh, but it's been obvious that most of you know. Which tickles uh, me to no end. Yes. 
Now, how much uh, black I'm doing to brown? Equal parts in this case. Oh, jeez. Because I want, I really want is a dark brown. Okay. So what you're saying is you want black with a little bit of brown. Sure. <laughs> The darkest of blacks. Of browns. Eh, darkest of one of them. Kind of ends up like, um, almost like a slate. Yeah. Tone to it. Uh, now as Aaron says, mimics were involved and it's not a trap. I mean, that's, that's fair. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Trap. Sorry, I keep dropping my paper towel. That's okay. And then I'm old, so whenever I uh, bend down to go pick it there up, there is a sound to... that comes. There's no, yep, trust me, I get yeah. that too. Mm -hmm. At least I can still bend down, though. Like I will accept, I must make the noise in order to bend for the ability to bend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, depending uh -huh. on my days, I'll be like, is it worth having to pick up, or can I wait for the kids to get home? Mm -hmm. <laughs> depending on how my back's doing, I have one of those grabber things. They are fantastic. Yeah, those things are amazing. I've had one of those for a while uh, because I am short. Mm -hmm. And we have places in the kitchen I cannot reach. Yep. And I'm not going to crawl on the counters because that's asking for trouble. Hi, I'm Trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, that's asking for a spill and a fall and some I, trouble. And I then, and then you. Yeah, I do that far yeah. too often. And then explaining to everybody why, uh, hey, why'd you have to go to the hospital? And not even having a cool story because mm -hmm. I, I want to, if, if I'm going to get hurt that badly, I want to have a cool story. That's fair. Hmm. It's not going to happen that way in my life, I know, but, you know, I can at least try to mitigate the not cool stories of, well, I was trying to reach for the, the wine glasses mm -hmm. and I fell off of the counter. Lauren, why were you walking on the counter well i wasn't walking i was climbing on it so i could reach the wine glasses so I could get into the cabinet mm -hmm. yeah we have a very small kitchen so there are, are many many cabinets that are very far out of my reach oh shoot oh shoot no like that they're out of your reach that's like oh, oh i thought you frustrating had a... oh shoot yeah yeah <laughs> And there's only so many times that I want to call uh, Luke on in before I'm just right. like, I can do this myself. Grabber time. Uh, ooh, trying to get under the mimic is always a challenge. It is. Yep. You get to see the butt of the mimic. Ha <laughs> ha. Now I'm thinking about Nemo again. I mean, that's always a good thing in my opinion. <laughs> I'm just remembering the kids are like, I'm going to touch the butt. And they're talking I'm about gonna the I'm going to touch boat. the butt. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that was just too endearingly cute and innocent, that scene. Mm-hmm. Are we doing the same color on both yep. bases? Hey. Keeping it Keep simple. It yeah. I like that. I mean, they do seem like they're on the, on the same kind of ground anyway. Yeah. So Maybe they're working together, too. Ooh, you know, the keg gets the people drunk, depending on our decision. <laughs> and the chest just jumps out from the decor. Yeah, the chest mimic is like, I'm really, really good at chests, but adventurers are starting to get wise to yes. the whole, the chest is a mimic thing. So uh, why don't we pair up? Because if they see a keg nearby... They won't be thinking yes. about traps. They'll be thinking, oh, this is just a cool place with a keg and a, and a chest. And they'll just open me without thinking and then we'll bull strike. Mm hmm God help us if mimics actually think that way. <laughs> well, now the mimics in my game do. Right? Mm-hmm. Tactical pairings. Yeah. Once again, there's that whole section in uh, one of the new yeah. books that's all about uh the the mimic colonies and how how big they get and uh how smart they get um and if you've seen any of z bradshaw's um animated shorts mm -hmm. he, he does a little one about mimic colonies that uh inspired me a little bit Aww. yeah Inspired. yeah i love his his little animated shorts are super good 
Bugs Bunny doors are the worst. Yes, gray L shaped. Absolutely. Ah. Uh, Sorry, just checking on something again. Oh, yeah. People yeah. in chat now saying Z rocks. Z Bradshaw. Mm. Yay. I should look to see if he's got a new video. It's go. been a little while. I can't imagine how long it takes to do that stuff. I know animation takes oh, an incredibly so. long yeah. time. That's dedication. Absolutely. Any luck or no? Uh, well, I'm done with the mimic, I think. I've got the, hey. the bases done. Okay. Uh, except for that bit right there that I missed out on, but there we go. <sighs> Woof. <laughs> now let's Aaron. All inanimate objects are mimics until proven otherwise. Mm -hmm. My friend made a suit of armor comprised of mimics. Mm -hmm. That's amazing and brilliant and uh, and also mean and wow. That's amazing. Yep. Okay. So. So. Here we have them, at least with the base color on the, the base. <laughs> and you know, it's all about point, that base. It's all about that base. So now I feel comfortable going in with the Nuln Oil for the Mimic bodies themselves. All right. So Nuln Oil is basically. It comes from gnomes. <laughs> it's, it's a black wash from Citadel Shade. And I am a Citadel Shade fan for washes. To me, they've always come out really reliable and consistent in pigment and how they distribute themselves along the minis. So they are my preferred wash. That's not to say that you can't make one for yourself. That's basically just taking some black paint and thinning it down so it's almost the consistency of a good broth. Mm. And that'll get you what you need. And I always go for a janky, older, bigger brush. This is my number five, I believe. Yes, the number five. And I'm going to go in and start putting this top to bottom onto the Mimic. And this goes everywhere in this case. It's going to go everywhere. Except I wouldn't put it onto the base just yet because we just finished painting those. And you probably want to do one more round of dry brushing just to bring out the details in the base. Hmm. Like that, I would just go in with the Beastie Brown and you'd be good once it's dry. Yeah, just because the, the base is so dark. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Ugh, getting this all over the tongue. Yes. Do. So satisfying. <laughs> this is, this is honestly, this continues to be my favorite part. I was going to say, I know what part of mini painting you enjoy the most, quite frankly. And, and I feel bad because Why? this is the part that takes the least amount of effort in my opinion. Yeah, <laughs> but, but it's, it's like that last finishing touch, you know, you've, you know, hit the wrapping up, getting things done. And that's where those last little bit of details pop out. And it's a fun reveal. I know, I know. And it's, I it's just, it. it's just kind of fun to be like, and I paint and I paint with mm -hmm. big strokes. That's it's just, true. it's just so satisfying. Yeah, I get that. I understand that. It's also amusing to do stuff like I have a, a wash here that is black and I'm going to rub it over, you know, bone white teeth and it's gonna make them look even cooler, mm -hmm. but not black. <laughs> yes. <sighs> because washes are magic. They really are. That's why I was not worried about these teeth looking too bright and pearly because I knew they were getting Nuln oil and I'm like, no, they'll be good. Mm -hmm. They'll be good and sinister in just a minute. Yeah. Just a moment. Oh yeah, and then all of the detail. Once again, my cameras are going to show it off too well, but definitely mm -hmm. all the detail on the wood, the wood grain yeah. in this mini is being shown off. Yep. Uh, same with the keg. Same with the keg. Top to bottom. Oh, we are getting asked. Uh, so it is N U L N. L -N. Yep. Nuln. Made of nulls. Mm. <laughs> But yes, I heard gnome oil too the first time and the second time and the fifth time I heard it. Yeah, that's fair. And it had nothing to do with V's pronunciation. V is, uh, was pr pronouncing it just fine. It just, it it's sounds like gnome. It's associate with it, yeah. Yeah. Totally fair. But I guess null as in none, as in black, 
is probably where the no I'm no honestly is. not sure where that comes from. Hmm. That's a good question. Uh, clearly one I've never time. asked <laughs> myself. <laughs> it's a good question. I never thought of that. Literally, never yeah. thought of that. Welcome to Peyton Slayer, where we mm -hmm. think the unthinkable. I mean, that's my best guess, but I'm probably, probably very wrong. That's still an interesting theory, though. Oh, uh, gray L shaped. Not only do I have Girl Scout cookies, I have a box of Girl Scout cookies of the Thin Mints in my freezer Oof, right now. Smart. Yes. That is smart. It is making me happy just thinking about it. Well, yeah. The problem is eventually I'm going to take that box out and then trying to eat them without eating them all in one sitting. Game over, man. Nope. Yeah, that's the hardest part. They will be gone super fast. But, oh, so good. All righty. Yeah, you can see there's yeah. more of that. It gives it an aged wood look once you put that oil, known oil on top. Did that dry brushing with the bone white? Yeah. And the teeth, the teeth just mm -hmm. look so good. Oh, whoops. What happened? I spilled my gnome oil. Oh no. Yeah, oh. I, I had a spillage. Oh, how bad? Oh, a lot. Not bad enough. Let's, oh, let's say I'm glad that we're at the end of the show. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it. Ah. Uh, well, we made it 18 episodes before I had a whoopsie. Oh, well, I mean, that's still quite honorable. Mm-hmm. All right, but here we have <sighs> our mimics mostly done outside of just oh, yeah, doing some grab. dry brushing on the bases. You can see. Yeah. We have our Ginny and our, wait, what was this one? I'm blanking. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Mimi. this one is chompy. Yep. Yeah. There Yay. we go. So here we go, our our toothy friends. Very toothy, very come friendly. Out to play. Absolutely, they just they just want to play. That's all. <laughs> Sorry, as I continue to clean up here from a mess. Oh no! <laughs> Shoot. You know what? It's it, it was gonna happen at some point, right? I was gonna yeah. I was gonna have a spill. I guess I guess at least it's the black wash over my black, black desk. Yes, <laughs> this is true. This is very true. It's the wash. You know what? My desk, all of the detail in my desk is about to be really, really, cool. really beautiful. Yes. <laughs> You're going to like make those pop. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> this so. is also why I'm happy that I put a whole bunch of paper towels all over my desk. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I, heard, I heard the so of more information is coming. So don't forget Monday, 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 we have something cool happening. Yes. It's the finale. Of yes. ICP Court of the Raven Queen, which I can't wait to see what y'all are gonna do with this one, cause holy yeah. moly! So yes, yeah. I mean, seeing the vote for today makes me a little <laughs> nervous, a little nervous. <laughs> yeah, but definitely, uh, come on by. Um, vote over the weekend, and because I think the last vote will be Sunday before mm -hmm. the show is on Monday. And not only make sure that you vote, but make sure that you then go and collect your final prizes because you'll want to use those tokens up for all of the stuff that you can get, all the chests, all the uh, special things that you can get just for voting, just for mm -hmm. just for helping B Dave make our lives, make our fake lives more difficult. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> and then next- He's yep. not making my real life no, more difficult. He's no, making no, my no. real life he's, more exciting. Exactly. He's making he's making my life more difficult. Mm. That. But here we go. That. Ooh. And then don't forget next week we are going to start up with the hook horrors. Yes. Or the horror. And that information is already up. I'll, I'll get my cup ready. Yep, there we go. That information is already up in the Discord. Discord.gg slash idle champions. Mmm. Perfection. So go ahead and check the Discord for all of the information you need in order to join us for the Hook Horror for next week. I think that's all. Uh, hang around because is. Garwar is up next. Garwar's Guide to Everything. We love you. 
don't spill your null oil all over your desk. <laughs> and have a good weekend. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>